Good evening. Welcome to tonight's session. We are live uh, here for tonight's session, which is build your personal brand. Yes, I know I've changed the color scheme on my slides, so apologies for that. We are just going to crack on with tonight's session. We've come on a little bit early just so that people can get here and see us. Uh, we're live on LinkedIn. I'll just wait for everybody else to join and jump in. But I can see, I think I heard the music to say we are live on LinkedIn. So, yes, we are there on LinkedIn. If you're joining us in the chat, please let us know where you're calling from. I can see uh, there's 50 people there. So, uh, brilliant. So, I can see he put people here. Graham's in the chat. Uh, so Graham's going to be helping us with some of the questions. So let us know where you're joining from. Um, there's uh, people here. There's a lady in the chat here on LinkedIn live who is sharing a link that is nothing to do with us. Uh, maybe one of the guys can screenshot that as well if it comes up again. Um, Graham, uh, hopefully it's warmer in Minneapolis today. Uh, uh, Niles is from Texo. Jose from Colorado, uh, Madeline from Arkansas, uh, Washington State for Jennifer, Texas for Debbie, uh, Paul from St. Paul's in Indianapolis, from Tara, Matthew from Charlotte, North Carolina, William Eastern, Pennsylvania, Miami, Florida, Humberto. All I'm going to say, I love the whole of the United States, but I have a very special very special affinity for Miami. Um, John from Honolulu, uh, Gary from Whitefish, Montana. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's great that you're all joining. We'll just hang on a couple of minutes just because sometimes it takes people a little while to get here. Um, David from Minneapolis, uh, 13, minus 13 degrees C today, Graham. That's, 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 that's um, stay at home weather for me. Sharon from Minneapolis. Julian from San Francisco, so brilliant. Um, you may need some notes today. And also, following today's call, what we're making available um, is if you want a personal branding call, um, you can arrange one at the end for free with our team. And I'm also going to share some resources with you you can get from the team too. Rachel from Minneapolis. Uh, so, yeah, there's uh, New Hampshire, Chicago, Illinois. Brilliant. I've spent some time in Chicago, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, me and Graham. Graham is our president of the United States of Maverick. And me and Graham have this banter because he loves the cold and I love the heat. So I'm a, I'm a coast and southern and uh, love the warm, basically. Uh, so uh, having said that, I've spent quite a lot of time in uh, Kansas City, Overland Park. Uh, in the summer, and that was beautiful. Uh, and Joe Matz is here from Raleigh, North Carolina. So brilliant. Uh, if you want to replay, Graham's put a link in the chat, uh, uh, email address in the chat where you can say, please send me a link, please send me a replay. And I've put it on screen as well. So if there's any resources I mentioned tonight, just one important thing if we mention a resource that you want, um, don't Put your email in the chat. Don't put your email in the chat. Drop us an email, hello at maverick.com, and we'll email you the resources directly. Okay, awesome. Fabian, Costa Rica. So, yeah, um, uh, Paul from New Jersey. Uh, so, uh, brilliant. Right, we're going to kick start. I know my presentation color scheme has changed, but the principles of what we're going to teach, whether it's yellow branded or pink branded, is exactly the same. Um, so Donna, if you want to replay, drop Graham an email, hello at maverick.com. The U US office team will send it to you, uh, link and any resources you need. Um, Jose, uh, yes, you can. Again, email us and we'll send that to you. So we're going to go through quite a lot of stuff. and um, We've only got 60 minutes to do it. So real important, um, I'm going to plow through some stuff tonight. Um, and what we will do is um, if there's any questions, please do drop those questions in the chat and I'll try and answer them as I go. So we've got a lot to get through. So um, 
Just a couple of things about us. If you've never met us, you don't know who Maverick is, we help businesses, salespeople, CEOs position and leverage social media, digital platforms, digital channels to evidence their authority and use that authority to, to uh, land their message and convince people to buy into their message. Whether that's a sales role, a thought leadership role, whatever it is, the fundamentals are the same. You are trying to convince somebody to buy into your message, whether that's you're selling something or you're trying to leverage and, and sell your expertise or whether you're trying to teach people and you want people to build an audience around you. So that's what we do. These sessions are free training sessions. We do them for two reasons. And I'll, I'll just be straight up with you. We do them for two reasons. Number one is we have a mission. We want to help a million businesses grow. Now, we can't do that by everybody being our customer. So what we do is we give free training away, like we're doing tonight, help you think a bit better, help you think a bit clearer about what you want to achieve, help you learn a few new things. So that's how we can help a million businesses grow. And our business model is we work alongside some individuals and some businesses where they need more intensive support, mentoring, coaching, training. We'll work alongside individuals and businesses to help them achieve those goals. So help as many as we can through this stuff tonight and work with a, a smaller number of people on a on a one-to-one -one or group or training basis. So that's what we do. This is who we are. And we do these sessions every week. So you can come every week if you like. There's a different session every single week. So let's look at some questions. And maybe what we can do is we can punch up to the agenda so that you can see the agenda a bit clearer. Um, so these are the key questions I want you to think about tonight. And this is what we're going to cover. Why do you need a personal brand? What do you want your personal brand for? Who will be your audience? What matters to them? And then three actions you can implement to build a brand in 90 days. So that's what we're going to go through today. So this, some of this might seem obvious, but I'm going to give you a different take on personal branding. Now, um, I'm going to ask lots of questions and I'm going to ask you to participate in the chat. So it doesn't mean I'm talking to a camera for 50 odd minutes. Um, Graham's just asked a favor. If you're watching on LinkedIn or on YouTube or on our social channels, do the whole thumbs up and subscribe and follow. That would be awesome. Okay. So why do you need a personal brand? Why do you need a personal brand? So let's just think about. Um, why do you need a personal brand? Well, if we think about social media, digital platforms, now more than ever, it's become easier to reach people. Now, some of you may be struggling with social media. Some of you may go, uh, I'm frustrated with it. It feels like the algorithms are against me. Par just park that to one side because that's a training issue. That's something you can learn and develop a skill on. That's, that's something you can solve. But the reality is you could start a business today. And if you know this skill here, you can elevate yourself and you can be present at the same level as somebody who's been doing something for 20 years. You might not have the same skill. You might not have the same expertise, but the reality is, if you know social media, if you know digital channels, you can rise to the top without any expertise. I'm not saying that's right, by the way. I'm just saying that's the reality. So when you're trying to build a personal brand, what are you trying to achieve? You're trying to build trust, show your credibility, because let's be honest, there are some people who are absolute geniuses at what they do, but because they haven't built this personal brand, they haven't established their digital credibility, they st don't stand out, they're, they look maybe not that remarkable. And so their word of mouth, their street reputation on social media just isn't that strong. So with a personal brand, we can build that trust and credibility, and we are going to walk through how do we do that in a digital way. 
It can differentiate you. In other words, show you in a different light to other people. You can build a loyal following of people who believe and trust in you and look to you for the answers for their world, whatever sector you're in, whether you're a salesperson, a business owner, a coach, a consultant, uh, a realtor, anybody, it doesn't matter. But you can also future-proof your business. What do I mean by future-proofing your business? Well, the reality is that word of mouth, um, 20, 30 years ago, word of mouth was everything. If you had business coming to you by word of mouth, you were onto an amazing thing. But as society has adapted, as things have changed, social media is now a form of word of mouth. Have you heard about this person? Oh, I follow this person. And so what happens is you can have massive exp expertise, a big word of mouth in the traditional sense. But when you come to social media and as your market changes, like all of our markets are changing, you find that actually that impact you had in person doesn't translate digitally. So how can you future-proof your business? Excuse me. You can future-proof your business with a personal brand, a digital personal brand, by creating that ripple effect that social media is so good at, that people who you don't know, know you. So people who you don't know, know you, you can do through social media. So the advantages there is that you're creating this ripple effect across a social platform, across social platforms that draws people to you. They recognize your expertise and your credibility. They recognize the value you bring. And so they engage with you in whatever form. And we'll look at the different types of personal branding and positioning that you can do. Um, so this is really important. So let me ask you, what do you want your personal brand for? What do you want to achieve with your personal brand? And I'm, I'm not going to uh, move past this slide too quickly because the next slide is the most important. So if you're watching me now, uh, and you can hear me, just write out and tell me what your business does. And why, uh, just tell me what your business does in the chat. Just put in the chat, this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. So I can understand who's doing what, and we can see, and we can tailor tonight's training. So put in the chat what you do, whether you're a coach, a consultant, a small business owner, a marketing agency, a, a global marketing person, a salesperson, put it in the chat of what you do or the comments so that we can hear what you're up to and who, what it is you do. Uh, that would be brilliant. So put those in the chat and then we'll, we'll crack on. But what do you want your personal brand for? So uh, Christine, CEO. So Christine said CEO. So you're leading the charge. You're the front person of the business. You are the biggest ambassador of your business. Marketing consultant, Michael, you want to elevate yourself as a, a leader, recruiter, you want to, uh, so cybersecurity, SME, HR manager. So these are all, everybody's saying here, everybody's pretty much saying, I want to use a personal brand to establish myself as an authority. We call it an expert authority. That doesn't mean you're in court giving evidence in court cases, not necessarily, maybe for Michael, who's a lawyer. But actually what you're trying to do is leverage your expertise so other people see that you are the go-to person. If you're a CEO and it's your own business, you're trying to leverage it to showcase the company. Very often the CEO is the front person of the company, uh, the most public figure. And so they represent the brand, but they are a brand in their own right. Um, so whatever you're trying to do with your personal brand, there's really a couple of fundamental goals. So what do you want to do with your personal brand? And this is where I, I've got what I call the back to the future exercise. Back to the future exercise. If you had the personal brand you want, and this is really important, 
Because often what happens, we think about a personal brand and we think about the results we want, but we actually approach it from a, a piecemeal approach, a step-by-step -step approach. And we don't think, what's our end result we want? So if we think about our back to the future, imagine you've built this personal brand. Imagine you've built the personal brand. What are you doing right now? Are you speaking? Are you consulting? Are you writing a book? Are you um, selling more stuff inbound? Are you getting more inbound inquiries for business? What's the end result you want from this? The reason I say this, and we'll go to this one, is think about if you could achieve your personal brand and it could be built to where you want it to be in six months' time, you need to write down what, what the goals are for that. Because what happens is if you're not clear on what the results you want from your personal brand are, you might start developing all sorts of little things to help you build a personal brand, but actually what they do is they don't channel it into the right place. So for an example, if you are trying to build a personal brand around uh, speaking and consulting, then you want to actually position for that. You don't want to actually position that you're something else. Now that might go, well, yeah, that makes sense. That's common sense. But it's so often that people go, oh, well, what if I did this? Or what if I did that? What if I got any more press? What if I got wrote a book? And some of these things will help you build your brand. But actually, for an example, a book is often best used after you've built a level of a brand. Doing a book from scratch, we've all seen how that works, self-publishing and stuff. You need to do things in a particular order. So if six months from now, imagine you've built that personal brand. Are you getting inbound inquiries for speaking gigs? Are you getting consulting gigs? Are you getting inbound inquiries and business inquiries for your business? What's the end result you've got? And where are you today? What's happening today? What's the state of your brand today? So just think about it. I'll just do a very simple example of this. Let's say, let's say for an example, you want to use your personal brand to get more customers, get more clients, onboard more clients. You want to be, we'll pick Michael, who's the lawyer. Um, uh, Michael, the lawyer, he'll want to use his brand to establish his reputation as a formidable lawyer, but he'll also want to establish his reputation as a formidable lawyer in the minds of small business owners or uh, individuals, private citizens. Who does he want to establish that with? Equally, and Michael, sorry, you answered first, so you've become my test subject for tonight. Michael also might have a slightly different personal, uh, personal brand goal. He may prefer to build that personal brand within the legal community. And they're two different things. Being a personal brand to your target audience from a customer base and building it for your le the legal community are actually two different objectives. It doesn't mean you can't do both, but they are two different objectives. So think about the objectives of what you'd like to achieve, say in six months uh, time from your personal brand. Write them down. I, I want this many inquiries. I want to be speaking twice a month in various events. I want to do this or that and the other. Write them down. Write those down. Now we go back to today. So we travel back in time, back to the future. We've been to the future and now we come back and go, OK, for me to um, have all of those things, what actions do I need to be doing? What is the things that aren't happening? And make a list. I need so many people, so many customers to be engaging with me. And we'll have some simple metrics that we can do in the session. But you need to think about what do I want out of this? I am. Um, I met somebody 
who was building their personal brand and they were getting loads and loads of speaking gigs, speaking at conferences and all that kind of stuff. And they loved it. But they got really frustrated because what they really wanted to do is build a consultancy practice. And so the speaking gigs were good for their profile, but because of the way they positioned themselves, they weren't getting the inquiries for the consulting work. So setting yourself up in the wrong way can actually end up in a position whereby you're doing the speaking gigs and nobody connects the dots that actually you're a consultant. So it's really important that you think about this. What do you want to achieve from this? What does that look like? Make it tangible, tangible. Five inquiries, 10 speaking gigs, da, 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 da. Yeah, make that list and put it into context of where you are today. Then I want you to do one more thing and go, what does that mean to you? And the reason I say, what does that mean to you is if you could get there in six months, would you be prepared to invest the time to build it? Because it takes on average seven to 11 times for somebody to even see a piece of content of yours for them to remember your name. So six, six months to do this, to build that brand is actually quite fast. The average content marketer. So if you decided, do you know what? I'm going to become a YouTuber. Yeah. Or I'm going to become a TikTok person or I'm going to become a full time LinkedIn person or whatever it is, an Instagram influencer. The average time for that person to become full time funded from their business is 18 months to become full time uh, revenue positive. So if you started a YouTube channel today, it would probably take you 18 months to establish that to a point where you can full time run off the YouTube channel in terms of revenue. So six months to build something like this is a short time frame, but it will mean a lot of work, consistent work. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you might have to go. This is so important to me. I'm going to devote an hour a day, one hour every day to build this but knowing full well what you want out of it. So you position everything about, this is what I want out of it. So if you want to do speaking gigs, you get a speaking bio, you get all of your bio done, and you have it out on social media. You post, you build it. This is really, really important. You need to know what you want out of it. So simple ones. Is it to grow revenue, sell more stuff? Is it to sell on expert expertise? In other words, are you going to use your personal brand to elevate your pricing? In other words, if your competitors and you are neck and neck, you could use your personal brand to, to basically charge more. Do you want to build a speaking business? Yeah. So you want a, a speaking uh, gigs. That's another way to elevate your brand and elevate you as an authority. Develop your market authority, a, a, an expert authority or a thought leader. Yeah. You really need to think about this because actually some people, it's not about money. Some people, it's not about money. It's about recognition from their peers or it's about recognition from their industry or something like that. But it's, it's important you clear this up in your own mind because I'll tell you, in all honesty, becoming, becoming the expert in, with your peers won't pay as well as becoming the expert in your customer's market. Yeah. So there's just the reality, I'm afraid. Actually, this some of the best thought leaders in our set in, in the sectors who are who are the geniuses of understanding certain industries and sectors are not the highest paid. And so what I'm getting at, and I'm laboring a point here, is be careful you don't inadvertently pursue the wrong avenue. If you want to use it to make sales, absolutely brilliant, go for it, but make sure you're clear on that. So then you're building a personal brand with your target audience, your customer base. If you want to sell an expertise, you're leveraging yourself up with the customer base and leaving the competition a bit lower down so you can sell at higher prices. If you want to build a speaking business, then that's about influencing event organizers to book you. So it's about building an audience, a thought leadership, a 
personal brand, not necessarily with the, the attendees, because they'll experience you. It's about building that personal brand with the actual the event hosts and the event leaders. So you might have to become a personal brand inside the events industry to get on the stages you want to get on. And then to develop market authority, that's all about your industry, your sector. So if Michael wanted to, uh, Michael's probably feeling the heat now because I'm talking all about Michael, but uh, hopefully you don't mind, Michael. <laughs> um, if you want to influence and become the foremost lawyer in your sector or your, your um, area of law, that's a different thing again. So you, it's important you divide that up and understand it from the outset. So who will be your audience? So if we look at that, we go, okay, who's the audience then? Real simple, write it down. Write down who's the audience. Who will be your audience? Six months time, remember, this is the perception we're trying to build. You've got a gap between where you are now and where you want to be. And the brand and the perception is what you're trying to create. That's what you're trying to create. You're not trying to inflate something. You're trying to leverage the perception that you can add value to their world. So think about this. Is it industry market? Who's the industry and market? The customers, the future customers. What really matters to the people you want to influence? Now, this is really, really important. There's lots that's really important tonight, right? Who will be your audience? Is it the industry or the market? In other words, is it the legal sector or your customer sector? Is it your current customers so you can elevate the prices? Is it future customers to bring them through the door? And what really matters to the people you want to influence? What matters to them? What really matters to them? So again, we look at this graph and we go, we have to use our time. If we're going to devote an hour a day, we use our time to create content, to share our thoughts, to put out stuff about our world that helps them value bomb them. If you don't value bomb people, if they don't get value from you, they won't follow, they won't engage, they won't respect your authority because you're not speaking into their world with something that makes a difference. So your audience will be thinking about your topic in, a, in, a, in their own way, and your job is to bring illumination, to bring insight that is relevant to them. So again, using the lawyer example, um, if I am trying to influence a customer base, do they really need to know about subsection four, paragraph three? Or do they need to know that I know how the law works on that issue? And this is not, this is the layman's way of explaining it. So it's really important you think about it because actually, a lot of our greatest speakers, a lot of our greatest influencers in terms of thought leadership have actually been people who can simplify the complex, who can help people understand something in, the, in, a, in a more straightforward way. That's really where the great wisdom in life comes from. It doesn't come from necessarily... Uh, in the widespread market uh, to customers and all of that from people who are making simple complex. It's helping people see things in a different way. I call it light bulb moments. So whether that's customers, whether that's um, mar the market, you want to help people have a light bulb moment. Light bulb moment. And that's the gap. That's the gap. The gap is replicated in all different places. This is where I am now. This is where I want to be. I now need to work out what is that insight that unlocks this for me. And it's diagnosis. Diagnosis. So let's, what do I mean by diagnosis? So um, the first thing about building a personal brand is obviously there's all the glossy stuff, the imagery, the presenting and the smiling and all that kind of stuff and, and, and presenting yourself with confidence. Yeah. And having confidence and belief in yourself. If you don't have that, you won't project that confidence and people won't 
trust what you're saying. Now that's obvious, but actually one of the most powerful tools you can use to build your personal brand is uh, what we call diagnosis. In other words, helping people understand their challenges better. Helping people understand something that has been eluding them. Bringing illumination to a topic. What lots of people do is try to um, uh, be like almost like a futurist. This is where it could be. This is where it's going. But re the reality is if you look around the world, look around your colleagues, look around your own life, most people that you pay attention to help you understand your, yourself better. And there's a brilliant quote. It's my favorite quote of the whole year. Yeah. Um, it's by a GM engineer, General Motors engineer, uh, Charles, Charlie Kettering, I think his full name is, or Charles Kettering. And he said this, and this is really, really important. Everything's really important. But this one's really important because if you get this, it will be with you for life. It's that good. He said, when you understand the problem uh, deeply enough, you already know 50% of the answer. But when you understand a problem well enough, you have half the answer. So when maybe you're a coach or an advisor or a consultant, sometimes you can think, I don't want to give too much information. Or maybe you worry about how much information you give out. Think about it like this. When you help people understand their current reality, their challenge, when you help people see that and understand that, they actually, it actually opens their eyes to the possibilities. It opens their eyes to what it could be. So you don't have to give them a step by step. All you have to do is help them see where they are right now and where they want to be and, and diagnose why and how they need to get there. Any light bulbs? So I often use this diagram because sometimes it's very hard, very hard to understand the present, but it's really easy to understand the future. What do I mean by that? If I am looking to help a certain group of people, the first thing I got to do is look to what do they want to achieve? What would the goal be? So from your goal here, you want to establish your authority with a given audience and show them that you are the preferred choice. That's a personal brand simply. You are the preferred choice. They want to listen to you. They want to engage with you for whatever reason. That's the preferred choice. So what are the challenges? I don't know what to say. I don't know the audience. I don't feel confident. I'm not sure I'm making the impact across social media. These are all the challenges. So in a moment, we're going to go into a very tactical phase. But I want to leave you with that thought that if you help people understand their current reality by looking at what the future is, what their real goals are, and where that leaves them right now, the challenges they're living with because they're not there, the obstacles to getting there, not necessarily the step-by-step -step path, but the obstacles to knock out to get there, they will value that uh, and it will become a, a real value piece for you when you can help people understand their reality more. Uh, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions so far? Any questions? And Jeremy, yes, there is good music in Detroit. Um, I agree there. So I want you to, I want to walk you through some of the things you can do to build your brand in 90 days. First things first, you don't need tens of thousands of people to build your brand. There might be, well, let's think about this. If you want to get onto a global stage, if you want to get a speaking slot at a large event in your state or in your city, how many people need to accept you as the authority to get on that stage? How many people? It might be five, it might be one. 
How many people do you need to engage with your personal brand so that they see it's worth paying more to work with you? Well, it's the people who decide. So it's not always the millions of people. There's a brilliant book called Superfans. Superfans. Uh, and this book talks about actually most people only need a thousand fans. A thousand fans. And there is a process to building that and to getting that. But a thousand fans is what would actually jettison you up or rocket you into that personal brand territory where it's sustainable and it's building and growing for you. A thousand fans. Um, so Lewis asked a question about, um, uh, is it better to study the competition or try to avoid it by, to be more original or preferred option? So, so look, one important thing, yeah, you by your nature will be different to everybody else. So if you, if you look at what they're doing and learn, there's no, nothing wrong with that. Um, there's the first one, number, number one. It might be that uh, you study the competition. What I do, so, so without knowing who you want to be the personal brand to, what I look at is, okay, who, what, what, my target audience, if it's small business owners, if it's large business owners, if it's salespeople, if it's marketers, what are their big challenges that I can help them understand better? And I will list them all down and I will uh, do like almost like a, a, a mind map of all of the different things that they could be struggling with that fits with the authority I want to establish. And I will write content, I will do webinars, I will do any kind of thing where I help people understand this topic better so that they go, hmm, this guy's onto something. Now, I know it's not going to happen with one thing. It's going to be multiples of things, multiples of pieces of content, multiple pieces of webinar, multiple webinars, multiple PDFs, multiple social media posts. But I'm building it. And we'll go through that in a moment. Graham said, what's the difference between a brand and thought leadership? Um, they are, you have a brand now. Everybody has a brand now. The question is, how valuable is that brand to you right now? So how valuable is that brand to you right now? So Graham's asked a good question, the difference between a brand and thought leadership. Well, a brand is the perception people have about you. So one expression of a brand is that the person thinks you are an authority. In other words, somebody who's got some good thoughts to share, some insight to share. So in one sense, there's no difference between a thought leader and a brand in that the brand is the perception. So if I want you to see me as a thought leader, uh, you will go away and make your judgment. You will go and make that judgment based on the information I share. And that brand becomes a perception that other people carry. And if enough people carry that, people will then say, this guy's got something interesting to say. That's real simple. That's a thought leader. You've built a brand where people want to listen. Uh, Williams asks, who is the buyer decider for a single contract or an event? The event organizer. So I've been invited to speak at international conferences where one person has championed me. Now, of course, you want more people. But what I'm saying is for an event, you don't necessarily need the audience to think you're a personal brand because once you're in front of them, that's your choice. That's your thing to establish that your talk, your speaking will establish that or it won't. But you might only need a handful of people or one person within that event to go, this, this guy's got something to say. This lady's got something to say. This person's got something valuable to say. And we need them on our stage. That's the single person. Um, John White asks, how do you get a good review of the perception that you are creating with your brand? Um, this is a really good uh, question, John. How do you get the perception? How do you judge that perception? Um, part, of, part of that, John, 
is you have to put yourself into a place where you encourage people to uh, share what you're saying. So one of the key things that you should be doing with whatever your content is out there, if you start to put content out there that diagnoses a problem, check how people respond to it. So when I do a webinar or an event like this, I'm looking at how many people sign up and I'm looking about how many people share afterwards and how many people send me LinkedIn messages and how many people follow our page. I'm looking at all of those things to judge it. Now, the reality is there's no perfect way to judge it. And depending on how you feel about yourself, and we're getting a bit personal here, depending on how you feel about yourself, it might not seem enough and it might not, it might seem um, too low. In other words, you might feel uncertain about how you judge your um, success and whether it's working for you. So you literally have to judge that whatever you see, whatever feedback you see in social media, shares, likes, comments, messages, anything like that, whatever you see is a tiny, tiny percentage of the real impact you have. And the reason I say this is if you look at any celebrity, any major speaker, they will get a percentage. It might be a huge percentage compared to us, but they will get a percentage of really great feedback. They will get a percentage of negative feedback because you can't avoid that, by the way. You can't avoid some people just not liking you. That's just the reality. But the, the positive feedback is usually a small percentage. So what you look at and go is, okay, after this webinar, if I've got a couple of people who've put a post out and said, I've learned something, that probably represents that X percentage of people are actually are making an impact. One of the things you'll find is it takes a little time to really see the impact. So if you... Um, Uh, Edward was asked a question. I'll come back to Edward. No, um, uh, we're trying to we're trying to give you a, a, a leg up, Eduardo, into how you can do this and build this. Of course, um, the the interesting thing is to build a brand. And Eduardo says, "Oh, Ogilvy and all these big companies are helping you build a brand." Actually, teenagers right now are building their brand and leveraging it on social media. Teenagers with no marketing degrees, no marketing agencies, and no budget. And they're doing it whilst we're here talking. Yeah. So that, that opportunity to build a brand digitally is already here. Yes, you can go to big brand consultancies and they'll charge you $100,000 to think about it for you. But the reality is, People are establishing their authority on YouTube. They're establishing their authority on Instagram. They're establishing their authority on all the different platforms they can. And they are building an audience. And they don't need to make it profitable. You don't need millions of people. There are people on YouTube with 10,000 subscribers building a very good living very, very good living because they've mobilized a small group of people um, that has rippled out and built a larger group of people. That's where the book Super Fans comes from. You only need a thousand fans because those thousand fans can create quite a ripple, quite an impact for you. So um, uh, yes, so yes, William, in your scenario, if you've got an event organizer that buys into you, they will put you on their stage. They will put you there because they believe you have something to say and they believe in it. And because they put you there, you get that audience. So I've, I've seen many people do this where they, they borrow an audience because they influence actually the organizers rather than the actual group. Yeah, you, you don't need a mass audience. Some of you might only need 100 people and that's your business knocked out. You've got enough clients. You've got all the things. A personal brand is, is 
It's about building it with the right people so you can achieve what you want to achieve from it. Um, um, Amy's asked the question, is your LinkedIn uh, a sim, and we will get to the other set thing in a moment, but I'll ask you, a form of account-based marketing? Uh, no, Amy. What we do with LinkedIn, what we do with social media is not necessarily account-based marketing. It is and it isn't. It is in the sense of whoever's going to do the LinkedIn work, whoever's going to build their platform on whatever channel it is, they have to use content and build relationships. Where account marketing and we differ is that actually we have a trajectory that we're taking people on and it involves the whole sales process. So it's not about marketing, then we get an opportunity, then the sales. It's actually we build the process that a small business owner can do from start to finish. But the slight difference, or I think it's a big difference, but the t technical difference is, is account-based marketing is, is about targeting particular people and particular companies with particular content and converting them. What we teach, and it works on personal branding, it works on social selling, whatever model you want to do, the same principles apply. You've got to convince human beings that you have an answer to their needs so that they want to talk to you, they want to listen to you, they want to engage with you. It's that simple. When we strip the technology away and we take all of it away, and if we had a person in a room right now and I was on a stage or I'm here and you're there, my job is literally to engage you to get you focused, to think about this in more detail and see that I've helped you unlock something. If I do that tonight and I help you see something differently, I win. And you will thank, some will be grateful, some will write a review, some will share, some will connect with me, some will write a post about it. And that's me establishing my personal brand. But it's also about me helping grow my business because more people know so account-based marketing is about specific companies, specific people. What I teach, and it translates across everything we do, is that if you understand the needs of an audience, so marketing managers, small business owners, and you understand their needs, whether it be 100 businesses or 1,000 businesses or a million businesses, you can use content to speak to people at scale. So webinars, content, the works. So this is good for personal branding. So you can speak to people at scale whilst you do the relationship work of nurturing a core crowd of people that might be your 100 customers. It might be your 1,000 fans. So it's the two things together. So it's two things together. So this is what I want you to do in the next 90 days, and you're gonna to have to commit to an hour per day. Now, if you're struggling with this, because I have got to do this in like lightning speed tonight, I want you to post each day and speak into a need and topics that your target audience you want to build a personal brand with. Post each day. People go, oh, post each day, how am I gonna do that? Write down all of the things that they're struggling with that you can help them with through your speaking, through your consulting, through your coaching, through your expertise, through your business. Write down all the things. And then off those things, write out more examples of how they could uh, manifest. So if I'm talking to a business where they're struggling to get predictable sales, okay, point one, struggling to get predictable sales. What might be happening as a result? They're having to discount their prices. They're having to do this. They're having to do that. They're having to do the other. And I, uh, no, George, I'm about to do it now. That was just the prep of thinking about it. Here's the three things you're going to do. Post each day related to those topics. Write them down and break them down into lots of different topics. Track what gets your audience res response and performs the best with that target audience. So track your views on LinkedIn, track your likes, track your comments. Real simple on LinkedIn. Then repurpose that content into a blog or a poll or videos and images. In other words, what we do is we bluntly have a go, write all of it down, 
post about it, see how our audience responds, refine it and repurpose. And do that for 90 days, 90 days. If you do that for 90 days, you will learn in that 90 day period, usually within the first month, exactly what your audience is interested in, exactly where your audience can see your value. And then you can zero in on those key areas where you've seen the response and go, I'm going to expand this into a video. I'm going to expand this into a blog. I'm going to expand this into a guide. I'm going to expand this into an ebook. And you can expand your content out from understanding 90 days of commitment to put a post out every single business day about those issues listed down. You do that. And I, I, I don't want to, I'll give you an example. Uh, just bear with me a second. I'll go to LinkedIn and I'm going to show it. I'm going to read you. And if anybody wants to see it, I'll screenshot it, but I will blur out the person's name because I haven't asked their permission to share their name. But th this is somebody who wrote to me. Um, and I'm not going to share the name because you know, that would be um, uh, unprofessional considering I've not spoke to them. It's like every post I read, you've read my mind and posted it just for me. Starting a new business is exciting and also depressing at the same time. Um, now, they wrote that to me because I'd been posting consistently about topics and learned what's the struggles for particular people and particular audiences. And because I took the time to consistently post, I learned how to refine that message down. And because I could refine that message down, I could speak to people like I knew that, what they were thinking. And so this seems like, oh, really? Really? Six months, you have to nail your topic really fast. You can either nail it on paper and then practice it. Like lots of people do. I'm going to build a personal brand and I'm going to make lots of pictures and lots of images and lots of quotes of me, but I'm never going to actually nail the content where I can speak to somebody and it, it resonates deeply. Um, so that's really, really important to to do that. Um, so don't go hashtag crazy. Exactly. Sharon, don't go hashtag crazy. Steve, if I do those posts, what ensures my target audience will see that content? So Steve, if you're going to do this on LinkedIn, the simplest way to do it is go outbound to engage the people who you are targeting. So go and like and comment on their posts, engage with them, connect with them, and keep engaging with them and they will start to see your content. Algorithms work on the basis of if who you interact with, you see more of. So the more you interact with each other, the more they see you. I've just started on Instagram, just as an aside, because this will help you. I neglected my Instagram for a long time. So I decided at the end of last year, on the 17th of November, I would create my Instagram account from scratch again to basically see how difficult is it to build an Instagram in 2022? So I opened the account on the 17th of November, put some random pictures up and started to really, the beginning of January, ramp up my Instagram. I haven't got thousands of followers yet. I haven't, despite on LinkedIn having 50,000 followers, on Instagram, I've just passed 400 and got nearly 60 inquiries because I've focused in on a particular audience, particular needs, and just talked about that content and shared things. So I'm doing what I'm telling you to do, sharing stuff, building it out bit by bit, learning what people respond to and building it out. 400 followers. Now, it might take me a year to get up to 1,000. It might take me a year to get 10,000, but it won't take me to get to 10,000 to build a sustainable business off it. I'm outbound engaging on Instagram with my target audience. They're coming back and looking at my stuff and some of them are choosing to follow. And I'm doing that aggressively, engaging and serving a community to earn their engagement with me. Um, and it will pay off in the long run. As I've done on LinkedIn, more than um, 600,000 pounds, so like a million dollars of Inbound business comes to my LinkedIn account every year because I've built that asset out. Dean Seddon's personal brand on LinkedIn is pretty strong. Um, 
Now I've got to do that on my new Instagram and build the same thing. And over the next three months, I'm going to be blitzing it to build that out and establish that place. Will I be the biggest person on Instagram? No. Will I be the most beautiful person on Instagram? No. But will I have established that I'm a go-to person for advice on growing businesses organically through digital platforms? Absolutely. So it really works. What's the best way to find your target audience's struggles? Should I reach out to people directly or ask? So Dakota, you're on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has some brilliant polling features. So depending on what you're doing, you could um, you could um, put a, some, a series of polls together to help you understand what, where your audience is at about particular things. Real simple. So, so it might be that you Google, you go to Quora, you go to websites, answer the public, keyword search websites, see what people are talking about. And then you do some polls on LinkedIn to help you understand which one's the real priority. And people will come and vote. And that will help you. And then you go, oh, that was interesting. That poll did that. I'll do a post about that and see how it responds. So it is a process of iterative development which might take you a couple of weeks to get in your stride. But once you do, you find these messages where people say, it's almost like you knew what I was thinking because you've spent the time to understand their needs. Um, yeah, so Sharon, what, what you can do is take different spins on the same topic. So um, I often talk about a content map where you write down all the big opportunities, all the big challenges, and then you can mix and match those boxes to create different content pieces. And it's actually really useful. One of our accelerator students did this, put, did that boxing example, put two together, got more than 230 people to his webinar, and messaged me this morning saying he used our content framework that we teach in our accelerator program, and he got an inbound inquiry from the first one he did using it. So there is a structure, but speak to the needs, attracts the crowd you can serve. Real simple. The crowd you can serve, if you speak to their needs, their challenges, their worries, their concerns, their unfamiliarities, you actually attract those people. Any other questions? So I, I want you to do this. Yeah. Um, there's similar people who do this on YouTube and they say, do the 100 day uh, YouTube challenge. 100-day YouTube channel challenge. What is that? And basically, for 100 days, you do a YouTube video every single day. Now, why would anybody tell you to do that? Because surely some days you do horrific videos. Some days you'd like not feel like it. Some days you might have really weak content. The reason being is content production and building any kind of authority has to learn how to do it in implementation. The only way to learn is actually implementing. And so what happens is you build something and you don't actually learn because you don't do it consistently enough. There's a great book, which I, the name escapes me, but Malcolm Gladwell wrote it about it takes 10,000 hours to be a subject matter expert in pretty much anything, 10,000 hours. Some of you have already got those 10,000 hours nailed. Yeah, so you've got the 10,000 hours nailed. But actually, the next level of expertise is, is developing the, the personal brand element of those 10,000 hours, which is actually maybe, it might be 90 hours, it might be 100 hours, it might be 150 hours of work posting and learning how people respond to actually build that muscle that um, creates the audience. So many people I've seen that they've, they've, They've got all the expertise, but they don't deploy it for fear of it not looking right, not being perfect, and they delay the ability to build their brand because they, they only learn, you only learn on the job. When you learn, so when you learn to drive, yeah, you learn the theory, you do your test, but actually you really learn how to drive on the road with other people properly when you've actually been driving a while. You learn how to maneuver once you've been driving a while. You learn how to present by presenting more. You can't perfect a presentation by just practicing 
in a room on your own, you have to deliver the presentation multiple times and you become very comfortable at delivering the same presentation. If you're, if you know, if you're in a professional uh, role, you know, where you've had to do a lot of study, uh, so legal, medical, all of those things, um, yes, you know the theory, you've done a lot of practice, but then you go into training where you actually go and do it in hospitals and in courtrooms as a junior, and then you build up the same process with building a personal brand. Your skill is translating all the knowledge you've got into bite-sized information that people can consume. And based on their consumption of that information, it elevates you. It, uh, it separates you from the competition. And the easiest way to create content that people will consume is speaking straight at their need, which means you have to get on there and do the research. So 90 days, post each day uh, about topics that relate to your audience, about their needs, and you will build an audience. Go outbound, engage with those people if you need to, if you haven't got them. Track what gets a response, learn from what gets a response, track all your metrics so you can see this one worked, this one didn't work, this one worked, this one didn't work. And then recycle that content into blogs, videos, polls, all of those things and get them out there and do that for 90 days. So think about going, okay, if I do a post this week and it does well, great. I'm going to expand that and write it into a LinkedIn article. I'm going to put it on Medium. I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it on my website. Okay, I'm going to do one next week. Oh, I'm going to expand that. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to put it on my website. I'm going to put it on LinkedIn as a post to put it on social media and, and do it for 90 days. So the best ones expand into more content. Do that for 90 days. One, you will know what works. Two, you will have started to build an audience. And three, you'll have started to elevate yourself above everybody else. Um, one more question. Amy's asked, how would you blend account-based marketing and social selling for a business advantage? So remember, um, Amy, account-based mar marketing is obviously getting a lot of information to specific organizations. What I'd be doing is thinking about how social selling can create the relationship advantage. So whilst I'm doing my ads and my content and whatever other kind of methods I'm using in the ABM model, I could actually be deploying some of the sales team, some of our account executives, some of our business development people to actually engage those people relationally. I don't mean pitching them on email. I don't mean cold calling. I mean literally going engaging with them on social platforms, engaging with the, some of the decision makers on Twitter without pitching, just building those relationships so that as they engage with your ABM strategy, your people are already positioned with a level of relationship to move those conversations on. So do it all in a concerted effort. You deploy your sales team and your relationship builders to be in the right spaces with them whilst you're doing your ABM strategy. Amy, if, if, you, uh, if you want to have a chat with that, just uh, drop Graham an email, uh, hi, uh, hello at maverick.com, and we'll set up a time and walk through it in a little bit more detail. The key thing for you is a personal brand is about elevating you for a particular goal. And so you need to understand your own goal and what you want to achieve from it, what you want the result to be. Don't confuse your results because that can be very disappointing if you want to use it to grow your business with clients and then you pivot to start appealing and trying to elevate your thought leadership within your own industry among your peers. It can... Uh, it can backfire and leave you very frustrated. So uh, go post for 90 days about the needs of your audience. Learn what works and repurpose and expand on what works. So by the end of the 90 days, not only have you built all of those posts, but you now have better posts and better versions of it that can be redeployed and reused and republished. And we can go into a lot more detail, but if you start there, that will get you on a trajectory. And as you start to do that, you'll understand the problems of your own customers better. And once you understand the problems of your own customers better, you know the answer to building your personal brand because you can, you can tack in to where you're getting the most engagement from people who need you the most. Any other questions before we wrap up? 
Obviously, from today's session, you can have the replay. Uh, there's a few resources we've got that we can give you with this session, slides and what have you. But if you want to chat to us, we do do free strategy calls. So if you want to go, how does this work for me? Uh, there's a link. Uh, Graham's got a link in the chat. There's an email address in the chat too, and it's on screen. Drop us an email and we'll set a time with you. But it's 15, 20 minutes, whatever you need, and we'll walk you through how this applies for you. One final thing, if there's no more questions, please do go like and comment and follow and all of that stuff on the Maverick North America pages or wherever you're watching. Do the, you know, all that stuff helps us. And, you know, come find me and Graham Riley, President of Maverick USA, North America. Um, come find us and chat to us and give us the feedback. If you've got value, let us know. Um, and uh, we are back next week with another session to help you grow your business. So we'll see you next week. Uh, subscribe and sign up on the LinkedIn company page. And we will see you next week for another training session with Maverick. In the past year, Maverick has helped generate more than 15 million in new business. The biggest reason for this is our 90-day training and implementation platform we call the Accelerator Program, where we teach your team to sell on social media with an implement-as-you-go strategy. It's not a pre-recorded course, it's hands-on sales training that develops and grows with you, with 90 days of real action that generates business and long-term revenue. So who is it for? This program is for entrepreneurs, marketing and sales professionals who want to sell without ads, cold calling or pushy tactics. A better way of selling with real steps to take which speeds up your sales process without burning any bridges. These are just a few examples of results our members have achieved using the Accelerator. As you can see, the Accelerator isn't about quick wins, it's about building a better sales process. If you'd like to learn more, just book a call with the Maverick team and we'll show you how the Accelerator program can win you new business.